Well, hello there, my Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs. Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this January 2020. Uh, we're looking at the full moon in Cancer, which is on January 10th, through to the new moon in Aquarius on January 24th, right? So it's all in the month of January. Uh, I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. Uh, president of Drawing Circle Productions since 1998. Been doing this for a while. Uh, been reading cards since I'm 12, running the company for over 21 years. Good God. Uh, uh, professional witch, professional intuitive, and really, really happy uh, to be working for you all today. Although I will say, uh, working a waning moon right from full to new moon is a little tricky, right? So these reads have been a little tricky. Only two more left to go. And I will tell you, when I was blessing the decks, uh, as I do before I hit record, I actually shuffle each deck and bless it uh, with the particular voice of the divine, that it be a channel of divine guidance and grace. I do that every single time. Uh, but I have to say, for an air sign, my heart really opened on this one. I was like, oh, it feels so good. Like, I wanted to bless it again. It was really lovely. Just so that you know. Uh, if you are new to my channel, please do like and subscribe. I'm shooting for my 1,000 subscribers and above so I can do... Super live chat, make a little coin on the side. Yes, I do take readings, both on uh, Facebook Messenger, Skype over the phone, and in person. I've got two locations I'm reading on Long Island, but I just can't be everywhere all the time. So uh, I, I offer to uh, my subscribers a bit of a promise that uh, once a month or so, I would do something called uh, Drunk Tarot. There's a link in the description box below about what that is. Uh, just as a fun thing to do, and entertainment purposes only, but I'm actually wicked fucking clear when I... <laughs> <laughs> when I drink, and I never do it when I work professionally. But actually, just over uh, New Year's Eve, after a couple of glasses of champagne, I had my cards with me. I was visiting some friends in Brooklyn, and uh, and I gave them readings, and they were spot on. It was just what happened afterwards when they started playing gin, where I was reading <laughs> the playing cards. I was like, ooh, somebody got daddy issues, and it was not the right thing to say. Nonetheless, probably accurate, right? So there you have it. That's Drunk Tarot. Go watch the video. It's my favorite video of 2019. Dionysus archetype that I am. So uh, before we get down to business, a couple of things. This is a general read, right? Sun, moon, rising. Check your other signs. Not everything's going to resonate with everybody. I get people want a thumbs down when they get triggered, but if you're getting triggered, that's a resonant, right? I'm looking at the clock, 3.33 p.m., right? So that's a resonant thing. You know, if you get triggered, pay attention to that. Don't shoot the messenger. Just Hit pause, go within, and go, okay, what is this, right? What's rising up in you to be loved next, right? Uh, particularly waning moon, perfect time for that sort of stuff. So do check your other signs, even if you only get 25% uh, accuracy out of one reading. See if you can get the other 75 and the other two if you have those sort of planetary placements in those signs, right? Uh, some of you might have, you know, uh, sun uh, and rising in Aquarius. So there you have it. Uh, what else? Uh, please, oh, this is really important. Now, what do I need read is a little bit different. I haven't seen anything else like it on YouTube, at least. It's sort of like pulling a card a day, right? Like, if they, like you don't have to be a reader to own a divination system, right? A, an oracle card. Oh, what's my, you know... Uh, love card of the day, right? My angel card of the day. It's sort of like that, except we're looking uh, at a two-week period, right? New moon to full moon. Uh, in this case, sorry, full moon to new moon. Uh, but it's with a specific intention to ask the divine, hey, what do I need? Like, what do I need on my spiritual path? What do I need to look at? And you can make it that specific day to day. Uh, but for these reads, it's saying, really, what do I need for this full moon to new moon next? In other words, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to wane? What do I need to diminish, to heal in terms of release? You sort of following me? That's why, you know, new moon to full moon, way more fun. <laughs> well, we think way more fun, but we need both. I need both the waxing and the waning. It's just the way this world is, the erosion and the renewal, right? Might as well roll with it because that's the way it's going to play out anyway. So uh, last thing, always breathe. The more consciously you are breathing, because you're going to breathe anyway, uh, the more consciously I'm breathing because I'm going to breathe anyway, the clearer the energy comes through. I'm more relaxed. You don't get overwhelmed, right, by me going too fast. And if you're doing the same... Oh, you can relax, really be in the present moment, take in not just the words, but the energy of the reading, because if you're deliberately being in the present moment through the breath, you're tuning to the same frequency that I am, that I'm bringing the reading through from. In other words, the radio station is already playing, right? The song's already on the radio, but we're just tuned to the same frequency. I just have to be what? The antenna, the receiver, and the speaker. Oh, I just put it in radio terms for you. 
and change the channel. Whatever, my Aquarians get that technology, right? Not that y'all didn't fucking create the internet. <laughs> Even if you didn't personally, your sign essentially did. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, uh, breathe and let's get to work. Here we go. <sighs> my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, one card, a Caroline Mace archetype card. All the decks that I read are in the description box at the bottom. One Caroline Mace archetype card to represent this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising sign for this uh, full moon in Cancer till new moon in Aquarius, January 2020. What is their dominant archetype? A dominant archetype of someone that they really that they need to deal with, or even in a situation that they need to deal with. But in other words, what archetype do they need to be aware of this full moon to new moon next January 2020? <laughs> the thief archetype. I think this has come up before in, uh, in just this. Uh, I've been doing three a day, so it might have been in the first set. I worked, uh, uh, yeah, from Aries down. So it was like Aries, Taurus, Gemini, one of those three, I'm pretty sure. And whatever. Uh, the thing is, is then that this is something to be aware of both in the shadow and the light, whether it's you, someone else, or a situation. Um, I'm going to read it to you now so that you get it. But this is when when an archetype like this comes up that obviously the word thief has such a negative or a shadow connotation, the tendency is to uh, out of fear back off, right? That is a visceral response. But if it's triggering you that way, keep in mind the light is just as bright as the shadow, the opportunity for healing in equal proportion to the toxicity. All right, so pay attention to this. Breathe. See, this is where you breathe. The shadow attribute, stealing money, creative ideas, affection, or other powers you think you lack, right? So why do people steal anything? Because they think they lack it, so they must take it. Now, it never works out. Like thieves, liars, they, they can't really heal, right? Because you can't, th well, liars can't heal because they're not willing to actually f absorb, integrate, uh, and metabolize truth, right? So... They're always sort of running from something in that sense. So to, to kind of stop, right, and get, okay, I cannot heal if I am thieving and lying, then that eventually lifetime after lifetime, because remember, it's not always about stealing things. It can be stealing attention, right? Stealing focus, said what called pulling focus in, uh, in the camera arts, like theater and stage, right? You're pulling focus away from the person who's supposed to have it uh, in, on stage. It's all it's it's all because you feel like it's something that you lack. Where in truth, we're all one, but you know we're all at different places of of gain and loss in certain things, right? Uh, so the light attribute sheds light on the potential wealth within you that can never be stolen, right? Like self-esteem. No one can take your self-esteem. Why? Because it's self-esteem. You give it to yourself or you don't, right? So in terms of attention, are you giving yourself attention? Now I'm gonna say. They're giving me sort of like a, a percentage ratio. They, they, they don't give me fractions. They give me percentages because I'm not big on math. I'm all verbal. Yeah, maybe 1% math. <laughs> Look, percent. Uh, so for a small percentage here, uh, this is perhaps about you, uh, that one, one or 2% being the thief. But more of this feels like a recurring pattern for the majority here, right? That you have been stolen from or dealing uh, with someone who is a thief in some way, shape, or form, all right? So for you to be aware of that, even if someone is trying to steal something from you, um, that that this can help shed light on the potential wealth within you that can never be stolen, right? Wealth of faith, wealth of hope, wealth of love, wealth of health, right? You know, my parents and I would talk about it all the time. It's like the ups and downs we've all been through, but we have our health. Oh, it was because my mom watched the Linda Ronstadt thing on CNN. Yeah, it was a bit of a mind blow for all of us. It's like, my God, woman and the most beautiful, still beautiful woman, but the, her voice, I mean, come on, Blue Bayou, if that doesn't fucking bring you to tears at some point in your life, something's wrong, right? And, you know, it's so a very, very powerful thing. So think of what cannot be stolen from you. But what we're going to do, because it's Waning Moon, is uh, we're going to take half of the Chuck Spazana Love Pack, the suit of problems, out of the four suits. They told me to cut the deck in half and take only 
the card of problems because the other suits are luck, healing, and uh, grace, right? So they're the smaller decks that make up the other half. But to go in on the shadow so that uh, particularly as you hit the three days before New Moon called Dark of the Moon or Dark Moon, you can kind of go in and get a little bit more information on what this feels like, looks like, the shadow side, cool, because that's what you want to work on releasing um, Waning Moon, right? Nice deep breath. Particularly that it's going to end in Aquarius. I feel like you're going to get this higher perception perspective being an Aquarius, right? So here we go. Oh, my masters, my ascended masters, please, one card in clarity for this air, uh, Aquarian <laughs> collective sun, moon, rising sign, please, to clarify that shadow aspect of the thief archetype, please. One of the problem cards from the Chuck Spisano deck, please, for this... Uh, Aquarius Collective Sun Moon Rising Sign, this full moon in Cancer to New Moon next in their sign. Aquarius, please clarify one card. January 2020. Ooh, well, it's a problem. You got the problem card and the problem suit, so I think we realize that there's a problem. But this might even be saying that... Um, that that one is is symptomatic of the other right it's like there is a deeper problem going on here that the theft is not just about the physical effect that there is something at cause within a deeper problem now in this picture you got two people each have a half of a heart but like puzzle pieces except they're the wrong pieces right it's like they're two, two there's an, another half here and another half there that fit these two don't so houston problem. So uh, probably something internal, right? Like an internal, this is a, you know, a spiritual teacher and a spiritual healer and, you know, a spiritual counselor. Uh, this is definitely a thing where there is a problem at work here that needs to be resolved, but you can never resolve the problem on the level of the problem. You have to transcend it, right? I just paraphrased Albert Einstein, <laughs> my other Uncle Al, my other, other, other Uncle Al. <laughs> Growly. <laughs> Crowley. Crowley. Uh, if you have not watched Good Omens yet on Amazon Prime, please do. The books were genius. They did such a good job. It's because Neil Gaiman was involved. God bless Terry Pratchett. Oh, I miss him. Nice deep breath. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the daughters. Oh, sorry. I skipped a deck. We are going to use the Healing with the Angels Oracle. Because everything else in this, in this spread, now that we've got the thing that needs to be waned, is going to be about helping you heal this. So uh, from your higher Aquarian perspective, we're going to ask the angels, right? And not just any old angel deck, but healing with the angels, Oracle Doreen Virtue. Nice deep breath. Come on, my air signs. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Big inhale. Here we go. Oh, I felt that. Oh, my angels, please. One card in clarity for this Aquarian Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign for this new moon to full moon. I'm oh, sorry, this full moon to new moon next. New moon in their own sign, Aquarius, please. One card in clarity for January 2020. Considering we've got the thief and the problem card, what say the angels? Hmm the manifestation maybe this problem has been ongoing for a while and uh it, it, it like i said it could be a recurring thing where it's been manifesting over and over and over again through like minor theft and slightly more than slightly more than slightly more and that can really be the case if someone is stealing energy um i i feel like if the if the thief archetype is yours in that case then you're really looking at well how do i tap into that which cannot be stolen from me right Again, sheds light on the potential wealth within you that can never be stolen. Now, that's spirit. That's chi. That's prana. That's breath. You can, I mean, you can have someone take your breath away, but if they completely take it away, that's not theft. That's murder, right? So you can, you always have an abundance of breath. You always have exactly as much breath as you'll need in this lifetime, right? So I, I mean, that's a, it's true. It may not be helpful. It's true. Uh, maybe not helpful in this situation because there is a, another problem. Now, 
they're giving me Eckhart Tolle really quickly. This is how I work in spiritual counseling. He says, in the present moment, there are no problems, there are situations. So maybe your own perspective, your own choice, again, is something that cannot be stolen. You can give away your free will, right? You can give away your choice of how you want to perceive the narrative that you tell yourself, but ultimately that's still a choice. You can always take it back. So with the card of manifestation here, there's a thing of, look at how you're looking at the problem. It does have a solution. So, uh, really, Abraham Hicks are like switching me around the, the, <laughs> the, the vibrational channels here that, you know, you can focus on a solution then if you know that it's a, obviously theft is a problem. But looking at the shadow side, stealing money, creative ideas, affection, or other powers you think you lack, then there has to be a solution, right? Hence the healing. Uh, so interesting. Maybe you've been repeatedly stolen uh, from by someone. We all go through phases of that, as we, particularly if things are, well, particularly if it's time for things to be taken away and we cling to them. Like, no, and then they're ripped away. It can feel like the universe is stealing things. Oh, it's happened to me so many fucking times in my life where I'm like, okay, just take what needs to be taken. Give me whatever I need. Give me whatever I need and I will do my best, right? It's humility. That's why, you know, uh, I'm sort of like a slave to the gods and servant to all their children, but I am slave to no man. I mean, I abide by the, ru the rules of the road, the laws of the land. I ain't stupid. I was raised by a lawyer. Um, but, you know, that thing of it's like it's only to the divine. It's like, okay, whatever you want, thy will be done. I know it's Christian-y. Christian-y for a witch. As my cards spill across the table and the floor. Uh, so you get this is pretty deep, but what else would I expect from Aquarians? Nice deep breath. As we ask uh, the gods and goddesses, usually I use the Daughters of the Moon Tarot only uh, for the voices of the goddesses, and I use the Mythic Tarot, Julia Charmin Burke, I love that deck, uh, for the gods. This, I'm doing both. They said it was okay, so I'm doing it. Nice deep breath. my gods and goddesses please one card in clarity for this aquarian collective sun moon rising sign this new moon in cancer to full moon next i did it again this full moon in cancer to new moon next in aquarius please my gods my goddesses for this aquarian collective sun moon rising sign uh, we've got the thief archetype, a problem and manifestation. This does not feel great. In my gut, it feels like, uh, so please, a tarot card, a daughter of the moon tarot, a clue, a tip, a hint, a piece of the story so that we can identify, well, actually, so these Aquarians can get a clear idea who or what this is about for this new moon to full moon next. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. Now, the Nine of Pentacles is a wealth card, right? It's very much like the wish fulfillment card of uh, the Nine of Cups. You hear that all the time. Uh, but the Nine of Pentacles, if you think of, you know, the Rider Waite Tarot, it's a woman in the garden with the hooded falcon, right? Probably a peregrine, right? Peregrine falcon. Or, whoa, rah, right? Uh, obviously has wealth, but is good on her own. She even has, like a bird of prey. She can protect herself. Here we have Malama, uh, Polynesian. Goddess, full-breasted, full-gored, right? Like, just, just, but so good on her own, like, can take care of herself. Goddess, bless the goddess that's got her own, right? So I think here we really are looking at, particularly with manifestation, I didn't want to go there right away, but we're, I think we're looking at a thief, a, a, a thievery, a, something being stolen physically, literally, here. Um, because of the preponderance of, of not just the Nine of Pentacles, but that thing of manifestation, right? Again, it can be mean. It can mean that this is manifesting itself because of a deeper interior problem. That's true anyway. Cause and effect. Cause effect. I know it looks the other way. Like they did that. They caused me to feel this way. But that's not how the quantum works. It's the inner manifests the outer. And there are some keys in there about how to manifest reality that have been distorted over the decades, if not centuries. Because why in the world would anybody create theft for, you know, somebody stealing something from them? No, that's the divine plan at work. That's, there's a lesson being taught here, perhaps pointing to a deeper problem. Now, this might not be your problem, but it's certainly your lesson if you're involved, right? 
And maybe that's the thing. Do you take responsibility for other people's stuff? I know a lot of spiritual seekers and pilgrims that do. It's like, oh, I don't know. I must have manifested it. My vibration was low. No, that's horseshit. Shit happens in order to teach us. Everything that happens in the quantum field is to teach us something. It's happening to, it's not happening to us. It's happening for us. Very Course in Miracles. Or, uh, or I like the way Matt Kahn says it, he's the last deck we're gonna choose from. Uh, everything is here to help us. And it is, but the personality fucking hates that, the ego hates it worse, uh, but the soul knows it to be true, right? So that Nine of Pentacles here, yes, that can mean your own sov uh, sovereignty too. If someone's trying to steal your energy, your sovereignty. I think regardless of how that's playing out, it's definitely playing out in the physical, right? This is not about psychic theft, someone's stealing my energy from afar. This shit's playing out in third dimensional real time. So who better to ask than uh, the ascended man of uh, the ascended masters, uh, the higher selves of all involved through the whispers of love Oracle. So please breathe on this one. Let's get you the highest information, the highest help, the highest grace, the highest healing that we can get from the higher selves of all involved. Please one card in clarity. For this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising sign, for this full moon in Cancer to new moon in Aquarius, January 2020, please, one card from them, considering we're dealing with theft, a problem, manifestation, and the nine of pentacles, definitely feeling the physical aspect of this for an air sign. What do they need? That's a pretty sharp pull out of the deck, wasn't it, Aquariums? Oh, fuck. Like attracts like. If you are longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are about to click off if they haven't. This is not blaming the victim. This is saying that there's something going on here. Again, it's like I said, oh, I lowered my vibration. I must have, I'm the, oh, I guess that wasn't on my vision board. No, that's horseshit. There is a lesson being given to you here. Um, about you really, really seeing that which cannot be stolen. And what I'm getting is that if you are longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. That's what's written on the card. That what you need to do to release this deeper problem is to bless them with love if you are being stolen from. If, however, you are the thief, and remember, just because it came up with all this physical energy doesn't necessarily mean you're a physical thief. And if you're a physical thief, you need to look at that and get that because something was stolen from you. Right? And sometimes the things that are stolen from us are not immaterial in terms of not having any value. Like, oh, that's immaterial. But I mean things that are not in physical form. Like when we're children, right? You know, if you had any kind of codependence happening in your life, your boundaries were stolen. You didn't even have a chance to set those fuckers up if they were parents. And by the way, we learn our boundaries from our parents and our society. I was born in 68. Some of you millennials, that's why, you know, you got a different language for it. But, you know, some of us, it's taken us a while to build those fuckers back up. But we've all had things stolen from us, right? Someone steals your pride, steals your voice, so to speak. So, you know, that like attracts like card, understand that if anybody's stealing anything, it's because they're in pain inside, that there's a problem going on inside. And whether that's at a, well, one would think a soul issue, like a contract that you, kind of, that you came in to deal with, a mental emotional issue, um, a physiological issue, there's all sorts of problems that could be going on. And then the thievery is more the effect in terms of any physical action going on there, particularly when people steal the energy out of a room, right? They suck the air out of the room. They steal your enthusiasm. Oh, I know. Don't hand your bubbles to bubble poppers and your aquariums. You'd rather, I know I call you aquariums. I have so many aquarium friends. Just spoke to one today on the phone. Uh, <laughs> that thing of you want to like chase your bubbles, right? Ah, like not so much like Gemini's, they do that too. But don't then hand your bubble to bubble poppers right <laughs> keep it secret keep it safe right yeah well you know i was raised by teachers and lawyers what can i tell you <laughs> professional bubble poppers that's their job right no 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 the world doesn't work like that and then stephen hawking started talking about the quantum study quantum physics even a cursory glance <laughs> particularly if you're an aquarium all right so last card down this one's running over i don't care when i see the thief pop up 
I have a good touch of superhero in me. Wonder Woman. No shock. Nice deep breath. The healing mantra deck Matt Kahn have had it less than a month, have gotten so much good out of these. One side of the card is the name of the mantra, which is good, so then you can look it up in the booklet, which I'm going to for you all. It's not even a paragraph, a couple of sentences. Uh, the other side of the card is the mantra itself. Now, mantras are not affirmations. They may be uh, practiced similarly, but the intention is different. An affirmation is a statement of truth that you're trying to convince yourself of subconsciously, and I get that. We've been doing that for a really fucking long time, centuries probably. Uh, has the, the Science of Mind movement been around? Well, probably, yeah, over 100 years, at least a century. So, uh, but a mantra is different. I think it goes way, way back. It's, it's a vibrational statement from the soul. Now, these are in English. I'm so used to doing them in Sanskrit, because I like Sanskrit. I love a good dead language, because uh, my mind can't reinterpret the words, right? With English, they can. I can practice a mantra from here, and the words will change throughout the day, and I have to go back and check. Um, not so much with uh, Sanskrit, by the way. Um, but I just find this to be very, very helpful because it's the healing mantra, particularly with that problem card and the yikes, right? So let's take, I'm here for you, breathe. Let's do this. We're double dipping from the masters who gave us the problem card. My masters, Matt and the masters, no shit, please. One card in clarity. I ain't joking, I ain't joking. I'm not gonna call them, I'm not gonna say I ain't joking, bitch, to the masters. I ain't joking, ascended masters, please. One card. In clarity for this Aquarian collective, sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need? What is the healing mantra they most need for this full moon in Cancer to new moon in Aquarius, their sign, which means they're going to be going through the dark moon before they hit their own sign. What is the healing mantra for them considering the thief, the problem, manifestation, malama, and like attracts like? Please, what is their healing mantra for this New moon to uh, full moon to new moon next January 2020. Creating cooperation is the name of the mantra. Creating cooperation. Uh, more gets accomplished when everyone has a role to play. Oh, I get what that means. Whatever this is that's playing itself out is, well, it's all the divine plan, obviously, but no, this is something that was scripted that you and whoever else is involved must have known about before you came in because it is something that has repeated itself, right? So it is a, there, that there's an underlying problem. Whatever's going on in the physical is not the cause, it's the effect. That's the shift. Uh, more gets accomplished when everyone has a role to play, creating cooperation. Let's read that one. Creating cooperation. All right. Uh, more gets accomplished when everyone has a role to play. When cooperation is created, the unity of all is accessed to accomplish more in one moment than any one person can do alone. As a creator of cooperation, you are giving others the right to contribute, which only broadens the effect of collective expression. Once cooperation is created, all facades of competition melt away. See, I think that's that might be part of it. it. It might be that they see you as having more power of some kind than you do, or it's you doing it to another because there is competition rather than cooperation. What is the opposite of, co of competition? Cooperation. I think that's your key in there. Allowing each individual to feel, okay, uh, let me go back. Uh, once cooperation is created, all facades of competition melt away, allowing each individual to feel a renewed depth of self-worth by serving a vision greater than any degree of individual gain. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's the mantra to get rid of theft. It really is. Uh, this mantra is ideal for enhancing teamwork transforming family dynamics and increasing inner peace. Inner peace is always within us. It is one of the, th our, our wealths. Is that the right word? A plural of wealth is wealth or is wealth, whatever. One of those treasures, abundances within us that can never be stolen. Holy fuck balls, Aquarian. 
I think we should all just like take a day and just chant this fucker for 24 hours and just eliminate like all of that toxic competition. And look, I'm not anti-competition in terms of sports and shit like that. You got to compete against yourself in a way as an athlete. You know, award ceremonies and whatnot, that's fine. Just, like, let's not do with hatred in our hearts. Because, but stringing this all together, right? Let's start. We got the thief, right? The thief archetype. And uh, what came along with that? Well, we've got a problem here that seems to be the underlying problem. And that it's been manifesting, right? It's in manifestation. This has been in physical form. And if it hasn't, you're about to uh, see a manifestation of it, perhaps through a physical theft. Why? Because we've got the Knight of Pentacles here, but then also talks about she, he, don't gender it, that, that Knight of Pentacles, an individual who is cool unto themselves, that can they really be stolen from? Can you really steal from the Nine of Pentacles, right? It's like there's, it, it's not just about physical money. It's about uh, confidence and strength and presence, right, in the present moment. And because like attracts like, there's some lesson in there that creating cooperation that the mantra, don't forget the mantra, more gets accomplished when everyone has a role to play. And if you see yourself and them as playing your roles from a soul's perspective, right? Seeing it from a higher place, an Aquarian point of view, step off the planet and look at his souls playing a game, playing out a scene or a series of scenes, as this feels like, that you can get, ah, that there is a competition here between us that need not be. So uh, here's the mantra, uh, more gets accomplished when everyone has a role to play, and if they are playing a role that is that they are teaching you something, they may not know they're teaching you, then you can segue, you can actually make your way from this scene onto the next and possibly not repeat it again. Not bad for a mantra, and really not bad for a what do I need reading. So uh, may the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs be blessed with all that they need uh, this new moon to full, uh, sorry, full moon to new moon next. Oh, I am almost done. You think I would stop doing that? Uh, uh, that they may have everything that they need to heal, to grow, to solve the problem, to heal the problem that whatever is manifesting here, that creation, uh, uh, cooperation is created and that they discover within themselves that which can never be truly ever stolen, that interior wealth that they may grow to become, to know, to embrace, to be the best that they can be and fulfill their role in the divine plan for the well-being of all. And so it is. Thank you so much, my Aquarians. All of these, uh, this whole series have been really rocky, like not my usual yay rock and roll, but like, oh, fuck. But that's that means I'm good at what I do. I'm tuning to the waning moon stuff. But don't worry, I'm doing Path of True Love next. And I'm going to be starting with Pisces and working backwards. So Pisces is my next and my last. Tomorrow I start with Path of True Love. So please do watch. And please, again, do like and subscribe. Help me get to uh, my 1,000 subscribers so that I can do super live chat and drunk tarot. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. And as ever, hail, farewell, and blessed be.